So most games have to save your data because, you know, whenever players uh, join back into your game, they always want to uh, get back to where they ended off at last time. So uh, what we'll do here uh, is we're going to make a currency system and then we're going to save it so whenever a player rejoins, all their data is saved. So I already have this uh, leader stats uh, script right here. Uh, it creates a folder. It calls it leader stats with uh, no capital letters and then it parents it to the player. And then uh, we make a currency value. Uh, we name it coins and then we set the value to zero and then we parent it to the leader stats folder. And we put this into a player added event, so whenever a player joins, we set a parameter to the player. Anything in here will happen whenever a player joins, and uh, to get the player who is joined, you have to use this parameter right here. So um, that's just to explain everything. So we're going to make a variable up here called data store service. Um, so this is the service where all your data gets saved in. And then we're going to make another variable for the, um, for the data store inside of that service. So we could call this coins data, and then we could do uh, data store colon get, sir, uh, get data store, and then uh, coins data. You can name this uh, data store whatever you want, and you could put as many data stores as you want. But for right now, we're only going to be saving the coins, and this is the data store that we're going to be using to save them. Um, so now that we have that, uh, before we continue actually, um, let's make sure that uh, enable studio access to API services is on. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so let's enable this and uh, bam. All right, we have enabled studio access to API services. So that means that we're going to be able to uh, use uh, data stores inside of studio uh, and we don't have to join the actual game uh, to test it out. So uh, now that we have all of that done, uh, so whenever the player joins, the coins value will, uh, will be set to zero. Well, we don't want that. Uh, so what we can do is uh, we can do coins data colon get async and then player dot user ID. Um, you can set this key to whatever you want, but this is going to be their key uh, where all their data is stored in. Uh, their user ID is unique from all the others, so that means uh, there won't be like any like players having the same key or anything. Uh, so we'll we can just set it to its user ID and bam. All right. Uh, so, if there was no data, though, and there was a new player, we always want to put or zero, just in case if there was no data, because uh, if there's a new player, then we obviously have to set it to zero because there's no data saved. You can set this zero to whatever you want if you want them to, you know, start with 100 coins or, you know, you could do whatever with that. And now we want to we, we, we wanna make sure that uh, their data gets saved every time the coins value changes. So uh, what we can do is we can do a changed event right here, uh, not child added, uh, changed right here, colon connect function, and uh, we don't need to set any parameters for here, and we also need to put an, uh, a close bracket right there uh, at the end. All right, uh, now that we have that, uh, what we can do is we could say uh, coins data, colon set async, and then we're going to put in their key again, which is their user ID. And what we're going to be saving, uh, which is going to be our second argument here, uh, it's going to be the coins value. Uh, so there you go. It's pretty simple stuff. Uh, and you don't have to make a, a player removing event because whenever their coins do, uh, whenever their coins do save, it already saves. So we don't need some sort of player removing that saves their data whenever uh, they leave the game. Uh, so hopefully uh, this works. Uh, so in order to test this, what we have to do is uh, we have to make some sort of way where the player can actually get money. So as you can see, we started off as zero. We're going to go to the server and we're going to change the leader stats value. Uh, we're just going to set it to 1000 and there you go. It's set to 1000. And then what we have to do, we have to join back. And all right, let's see. And there you go. They have 1000. And uh, what we can do is, uh, if we use a plugin, just to make sure, uh, we go to the coins data right here. And uh, here's what we can do. Uh, what I can do is I could go to my profile, and uh, I can copy my user ID right here. And here's the key. And then we could just remove our data. So whenever our data, uh, whenever there's no data, it will go back to zero. So just watch. 
and there you go it's back to zero so uh that's how you save data in roblox um it's it's pretty simple uh once you get used to it um so yeah to review we have two variables at the top the data store service and the uh data store that's inside of that service we give it a name uh so that's where all the data will be stored and keep in mind if you do in fact change the name of this data store that means all the stats are going to be reset because once you change uh where all the data is going to be saved then uh that means there's going to be no data in here yet until people start actually earning money so um that's something that you could do um, or you could just reset a, a certain player's data just from going to the uh, data store editor plugin. Um, but if you want to reset everyone's stats, you could always change the name of this data store if you need to. Uh, and then we have a player added event. Uh, we make the data store folder, put it inside uh, of the player and call it leader stats. Uh, put coins and uh, parent it to the leader stats, call it coins. And we uh, get uh, async which means we get the data from this data store using their user ID, which is their key. And then we send it uh, to zero if there's no data. And then if the coins gets changed, then they will set the data to that key and they will save the coins value. So that's how you make a uh, save system in Roblox. You could use this for anything. I don't care. Many people use this method, but um, I just want to, I just want to inform you all on how to do that. Uh, and it could be really useful whenever you're making future games and you're and you're really in need to save data But you don't know how all right. I'll catch you all soon I'll do a lot more scripting tutorials in the future if you all want uh, more of them and yeah, I'll see you all soon. Bye